think there, there had to be a lot of faith in going so many different directions. It was different ventures for me, right? So doing the finance accounting thing, that was just the regular thing, but going into the acting thing and getting into the creative side, that was something that was maybe just a little bit different for my circle and for my friends and for my family. And not everyone in my circle was accepting of it. I believe every single person has a ministry. Ministry isn't just for preachers and it's not just for pastors. It's the way you shine the light that God gave you through his spirit in all spaces that he's trusted you to walk. That means you on your college campus. That means you at your corporate job. That means you in high school. That means you with your friends at the bar or the restaurant. That means you wherever you are, you have the responsibility to shine God's light in that space and you get the chance to. Friend, you are beautiful, you are worthy, and you are made to shine. And welcome back to another episode of the Made to Shine show. I am like geeking over here because I'm so excited. This is someone who I've been watching from afar for so long on one of my favorite TV shows ever. But now, even from up close, she is just such a bright light and has such a beautiful spirit. I cannot wait for today's conversation. Yasmin, thank you for being on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. Now we don't have to watch each other on difference. We can watch you right now. Yeah, we could have direct contact, especially when I come meet you in Austin and we have a girl date. Yes. Anywhere in Texas, because now you have to go to other places in Texas. I know. We can go to a Dallas. Oh, <gasps> yes. Yes. I'm you not, just spoke to heart. I am football fan, like agnostic. I, I root for them all because I'm not like for one team. So I will be a Dallas Cowboys fan for that day, though, that we go. I promise. Oh, see, so now it's already like messing up. Oh no! What? Oh, I see you. I can't hear you. I can hear you. you. Okay, you're good. I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? It says uploading. When the recording is done, you may need to stick around a little to upload your high quality recording. Oh, it's still upload. Oh yeah, it, it'll upload the entire time. Okay, got it. We're good to go though. Yeah, I can. We're good. We can just edit that out. And I don't know why there was just fire. Oh, a little bit. I'm what? You cut off just a little bit in that little in that little moment. I don't know why. Oh, weird. Okay. Well, we're good. Can you hear me? Are we good? Yes. Cool. All right. We'll just pick it back up then. Um, But anyways, all that to say, Yasmin, as everybody knows on this podcast, we believe that every single person has a ministry. It's not just preachers. It's not just pastors. It's the way you live your life and shine your light in all spaces that you do. And Again, from afar, what I've seen, whether it's NCIS Hawaii or The Chosen, or we were just talking before this about all these avenues of exploration you're getting into, like potentially directing, writing, producing, your, the world's your oyster. Like you are such a light in all spaces that you hold. And um, it's just so cool to see. And so I'm excited to dive in today on kind of your story, the who's who, who's in the zoo, um, but also like the the God that you know that's like given you the strength to shine this light in all these areas. And so again, thank you for being on the show. And we do have a tradition here on the Made to Shine podcast. So before we get into the nitty gritty, my question for you to set us off is what is your favorite quote and why? Oh my gosh. I don't even know where to start with that. Let's see. I, you it's know, and it changes topic. every day. What's your favorite <laughs> quote? I do you have so like, many. Um, okay. Mine. And then I want you to share yours. My, okay. I have so many too, but this one just came to mind. Um, happiness is, wait, happiness is found just <laughs> under your nose. Oh my gosh. I'm forgetting it. I think I'm making this up. <laughs> So it's a quote from me. <laughs> I'm just making it up now. Okay, I'm doing a different one. My other quote is, you can choose to break apart or break open. Aww. That's so lovely. From yeah. who? So, I-, I don't know. 
But um, the other <laughs> one I remember, it's happiness is a smile found just under your nose. Like when you um, smile, it makes you happier. That one, so. yeah. I like both of those. Okay. What about you, girl? Oh, man. Okay. So I, I am just right now what I'm thinking because I like to try and just go with the flow and not make anything up. So what's coming up right now for me, just because we had our whole little pre-talk and everything and we're talking about I'm in Dallas right now yeah. and we kind of were talking about football. So my favorite team is the Dallas Cowboys. And one of my favorite players on there, he's our quarterback. His name is Dak Prescott. And before he goes to to make a play, he yells to the whole team. I'm going to do it right now. He yells, yeah. here we go. And then they start playing. And I, in that, in that cadence, that way, every single time, no one else can do it. So now anytime I hear, here we go from anywhere, I'm like, oh my gosh, Dak. And there's a whole story behind it of why they started doing it and why he started doing it. Um, and it's just because he wants to, it's, it was a way to bring the team together and just to kind of get into that same mindset mm. of everyone. Okay, guys, we're, we're about to play. So let's get it together. Yeah. Focus. Um, oh, and again, it's just that cadence, the way he does it. And so it's just, here I really, we go. I can't, yeah. I have to and use so, that after this. Mm. I love that. You know, that's, there's like a scientific, um, so I was a psych major in college and they talk about having like trigger points and trigger points is in like when you're about to do something, having something that triggers it's game time. Or, um, so like for me, I always, I have this little box of matches that my best friend gave me and it's like, you're a light always keep shining. And I strike this match and light my candle and it's like, okay, it's podcast time. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have that for acting? Like, do you have something you're like, your version of here we go. Yeah, I think it depends on the role. It depends on the project. It sometimes it depends on the scene too. So depending mm -hmm. on what you're about to do, what your character is about to do, what's where where in the storyline you're at. Um, you know, some people do songs. Some people have journals. So I've tried all of that. Um, I don't have anything any one specific thing. I do like to. I'm not one of those actors. I admire a lot of those actors who can just be talking about something and then go straight into oh, to acting. Yeah. I, I do need to take a little bit. So I love just kind of a little bit of quiet, just recollecting my thoughts. Uh, and again, depending on the scene, sometimes it is easy to just like go into it. But maybe I would say just a little bit of quiet time. I just mm. need like just a little bit. I'm, I fear you. That's what I always... um. I set a timer on my phone for seven minutes and I, it's like quiet. It's I pray or I listen to music or I just, I, no one can like bring in a conversation to me before I do anything I'm nervous about or like anything I want to be intentional about. And so I literally yeah. set a timer on my phone for seven minutes and I'm like, okay, this is my, here we go. Like, this is my, yeah. zone, you know, yeah. um, I love that. Okay. So speaking my of seven minutes specifically, you know, like seven it's so funny. I was always so bizarre about numbers. Like even growing up as a kid, I, I guess it, I don't know if it's a version of OCD, but I had to do things for like a certain amount of, of minutes. And seven was always just this number for me. Like it was kind of like my, I just, seven was always my number. Um, even in tennis, I was a tennis player in college and I would have to twist my racket seven times before a match. And so now it's like seven minutes. And then, um, Someone said the other day, they're like, well, that's great. Seven is like the number of completion in the Bible. So at least it's like biblically associated. And I was like, okay, oh. sure. But I very much was just random. Is it your lucky number now? I I will take it as my lucky number. Yeah. Do you, you do know? a lot of things seven times? I guess so. Honestly, <laughs> the only thing I can think of is just that timer. But like if I read and like reading, I set a timer for seven minutes or yeah, I guess before podcast, I said that timer for seven minutes. Um, mm. I think for me, it's like just long enough to where you can actually settle down, but not too long to where you don't, you're like, I don't have enough time for that. Yeah, that's a good amount. Of, that's funny you say seven, because whenever I'm running at the gym, I'm like five is too low of a number. Ten, sometimes, you know, that's a little too high. Let's, let's calm down. Let's not be um, so ambitious. <laughs> 
this just seems like it's a good adopt it yes take it girl it feels balanced i agree I do it. I um I know it's funny how like we all have those little things, you know, those those things that I don't know, make us I didn't even think that was a unique thing about me until this conversation, but I'm like, yeah, I guess no one else does. That. <laughs> okay, Annie. <laughs> anyway, um speaking of quotes, so I did take this from your Instagram. You posted this. Uh I don't even know when you posted this. What did I say? Loved, I love it. No, I think you were reposting a quote, but I loved it cuz um it says I wear the universe backwards. I imagine putting stars in my coffee and sugar in the sky. I imagine going fishing in the clouds and watching the sun hide behind the lakes. I'm too busy dancing with my imagination to even tiptoe into reality for a second. They say I'm going mad. They're right. And huh. the reason I love that is there's a writer named Glennon Doyle and she talks about how like our job is just to dance through life and like God takes care of all the stuff that we tend to freak out about and our job is just to enjoy it like to look to him serve him and enjoy it and I'm curious going all the way back because you're doing all this awesome stuff now and you're like was this always kind of the dream of that imagination of that girl dancing with her imagination and tiptoeing through life? Were you always just that free kid or was that something that didn't come naturally and you had to work on? I love that you, you described it in that way because my initial answer is yes, that was in my imagination. The way I'm living my life right now is in my imagination. I was not expecting or creating any kind of game plan to get to where I'm at right now. And it just was not in the cards for me. It wasn't in the books. It was nowhere near. It was just something I was like, oh, that'd be cool. You know, Mm -hmm. that'd be so cool to live a life like that. And then as you get older, the, the ways of life and the, and depending on what, how you're brought up and everything. So my parents are very traditional. And so they Mm -hmm. wanted me to get a traditional degree, go down a traditional route. So for me, really all that was presented in terms of careers was, um, lawyering, doctoring, engineering, businessing. And I went the business route. Uh, and I, I, there was something in me that did really, it didn't come naturally. I think maybe at some point it was pretty natural for me. And you know, those, I don't know if y'all did this whenever you were growing up, every however many years they would do like a career test at school. Yes. Wait, which one did you do? Did you like an eight hour one? You did an eight hour one? My best Mayfield, my mother, was like, yeah, well, you did the eight hour one. So wait, which one did you do? I don't think I just took the whole day. What? (laughs) That's for all the tests. Oh my gosh. Many. And at the end of the day, they basically told me never be a doctor. Never. <laughs> like they're like you. Your mind goes from one thing to the next. You need to do something with talking. You would drive your patients psycho. I was That's like, this so funny. I wonder if that has something to do with it too. Like to see the duration, the long, the length of time. Like which kids yeah. were able to do it. The stamina. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. What, what, was thought, what was yours? What was yours? It was always something creative. Mm. And I was like, what am I? How am I gonna? Which? And then plus, I was brought up in Dallas. So I think it would be a different kind of scenario if I I was brought up in maybe like somewhere like in Los Angeles or in California where I could see that it just seems more tangible, but no one's doing it. When you say creative, do you mean like something that isn't status quo that that fit into like the engineering, like, like, like entertainer, it was always entertainer. Or was it like, um, I got something along the lines of of that. Yeah, no, it's, it was. It was entertainer. entertainer. And so I just didn't understand. Yeah. I was like, I don't, what? Did you uh, fight that at first? Like, no, that's not me. No, I loved it. I was like, oh, that's my like other side. That's like who I should be. But then I didn't think that that was something that I could reach for or even do. So I never really tried to do it. And then I started working in finance and accounting. And I was like, okay, so I can't, I can't imagine doing this for the rest of my life. Wow. So then I thought, well, let me find a hobby. So now I have the stable job. So now let me just find a hobby where I can kind of unleash my other part of my brain. And then I found acting and I just kept doing it. And it was so fun. And no, I was not natural. It's so funny how I'm pretty sure 
like, again, I think it was natural whenever I was growing up. And then at a certain point, depending on how you grow up, depending on who your teachers are, who encourages you, what maybe is pushed down Mm -hmm. again, depending on what your surrounding is like, uh, it's interesting to see how that can translate and then how if you work on something, you kind of find who maybe you were before. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. It, okay. okay. It does. It Keep going. It, I'm with you. I'm with you, girl. Okay. And because it's like, I think it's a societal thing also where everyone just depending, again, your surrounding, the society that you're brought up in and just how, what is, what's considered um, correct, what's considered taboo. So all these labels and things that people place, not even sometimes directly on you, but just whatever you're seeing in the world and how you should behave and how you should just be as a person. Uh, I think that just kind of all, and especially being young, you're just sponging up everything and soaking it all up. And so then it kind of, you don't, realize unless you reflect and I love that you're a psych major because then I feel like you would understand this unless you reflect when you're an adult do you understand and see how much society has affected you and how much your surroundings has affected you growing up and if you choose to I think you can depending you know hopefully you you're doing it for the right reasons if you choose to I think you can kind of unravel all those things and find who you who you really are or who you want to be or who you naturally were supposed to kind of, or how you were naturally supposed to show up in the world. Yeah. It's so good. I, I once heard it put this way. It's like a lot of maturing is just unbecoming everything you weren't. And that's kind of what I was thinking about when you were speaking to that. It's like, and, and I even think too, there's such a faith aspect to this. Cause you know, it's like God knew us before we were born and formed us before the world knew who we were. And so it's like, when we enter this world, we are just all of a sudden these sponges to use your language of messaging, like how we should be and how we're not good enough and how we need to change ourselves to measure up with a physical aspect or a mental aspect or an emotional aspect or like a financial aspect, ranking aspect. And I, in my own life too, have seen like the journey of taking one step at a time. The more I feel like I realize who God is in my life, the more I realize who I never was and like have the courage to say, wait, no, that isn't me. Or like, wait, no, I, I am good at this thing. Or like, wait, or wait, no, like that does feel like me. And there is a difference between doing something you feel like you should be doing versus doing something that you're like, no, I I really think I was made to do this. And it's funny because I, you use the word, you weren't a natural same. Like I even think about things I would say I'm called to do, or like I, I sucked at first, but the difference was I just, enjoyed it so much. There wasn't this like forceful, you know what I mean? Um, But I'm curious, like for you in this kind of relationship of becoming and unbecoming and the maturity of like you were doing a a finance job and now you're actually like, how, where is your faith in all of this? Like, how did that, what was kind of, how was God modeled to you growing up? And how has that relationship developed in the progress of your relationship with yourself? Um, wow. So the way I think, oh gosh, without even trying, I was never really, I I didn't grow up. I've had moments where I was super religious, not really, like I I went through phases. I, that was also an exploration, an exploration for myself as well. Um, And it was interesting growing up because I actually grew up with two different religions in my household. So my dad is Muslim and then my mom is Catholic and Mm. having both, and they both, my dad, I would say, is more culturally, um, but then that's just like a whole nother thing. But still, you know, they they believe the essence of of all of it. My mom's super Catholic, and uh, it's it was actually really beautiful. It's one of those things that when you reflect back on as an adult, do you realize I'm so thankful for how I grew up. I'm happy mm-hmm. that it was in a multi religious household because I feel like it makes me more open minded to mm-hmm. things. And that's how they, they raised me as well was, you know, this is, this is your mom's religion. This is my religion and, or this is your dad's religion. And we went to, to both, uh, religious establishments and I had friends of both and not just that, obviously growing up in Texas, I had friends of everything. Um, and so it was just such a, 
I think I, I am hesitating because I haven't thought about honestly the whole, the way that you worded that, the whole faith aspect with the journey. Mm -hmm. And there was, again, reflecting back, it's so cool. Thanks for asking that question. Um, Reflecting back, I think there, there had to be a lot of faith in going so many different directions. And what's interesting is I would, because it was so exciting, it was different ventures for me, right? So doing the finance accounting thing, that was just the regular thing, but going into the acting thing and getting into the creative side, that was something that was maybe just a little bit different for my circle and for my friends and for my family. Yeah. And when I, whenever I started, cause it was exciting for me. So whenever I started opening up to people about it and letting them know, cause I kind of just did it just to try it. And then I was like, Oh, I kind of mm-hmm. like this. Let me do it more. And then if I, you know, got a role or got something or learned something that I wanted to share, uh, and not everyone in my circle was accepting of it. Mm-hmm. Like, like I thought that they would be or as excited about like it, like celebrating they, you for it. Yeah. Yeah. And so eventually after some time, how that, how that, um, changed for me, instead of wanting to share with people, I would not share. I decided to just Mm -hmm. not tell people anything because I didn't want to feel bad about how I was living my life or what I was doing. Um, cause I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. So I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't want to be made to feel like I was failing at something or that I was wasting my time with something. And so eventually I just wouldn't tell anyone and I would just continue doing it. And so I do think that there had to be some kind of faith there. And I don't, I really do think it's in the moments where you know, your community is very important and having a tribe is very important. And the people, um, you surround yourself with to have those good, su- that support system. It is, it's truly important, but I feel like you don't know the capacity that you have within yourself until you choose to be by yourself and make decisions on your own. And now it's just you. And whatever kind of faith you have. And then that's even if you don't have faith, I feel like that's when you find faith. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, so, it, it's like you've got yeah. to, you got to like get to this point where you, it's like you decide for yourself. And I think a lot of times we're forced to make those decisions by life and circumstance. You know what I mean? Because for so long, and that's so interesting. The, um, and I even think about like the way you're able to reach so many different people now of different back, like, like the people watching NCIS Hawaii versus the chosen, but, but that's, what's so cool. And like, so one of, um, a past, one of my pastors, he talks about this all the time. Like he, um, sang in a, like a multicultural choir and that like all throughout his youth. And now he pastors a multicultural church. And he's like, that was preparing me for, to be able to lead people of all different backgrounds and perspectives. And I think about your story and like, how cool is it? Like you were one modeled such like different beliefs, just up front and close. And now like God used that in your heart to teach you how to be kind and love and opening and like such a light for so many different kinds of people. And that's what you're doing with your, like the evidence of that is in your work and your craft. And I just, I just think that's so cool. And, um, I can relate to, to the, um, sometimes I have this feeling of like, where do I fit? Um, because you know, you obviously have a part of you that can be analytical and can be very organized if you were finance, you know, if you were working in finance, but then you also have this creative side. I was actually at dinner with some friends last night and we were talking about which one are you? Are you the person that's like super organized and routine oriented? Are you the creative? And I literally was like, I'm not even kidding you. I am both to the extreme Um, because I am a to-do list girl and I think logically and I love a good project planning and I love process orientation, but I also could write for 
hours and get lost mm-hmm. and get lost in video content creation. So I guess, how would you describe yourself like that? Like the gifts God gave you, like, where do they, do you feel like you don't fit sometimes too? No, it's so funny because I th- I feel the same way. And I, I still remember, cause I love organization charts, you know? Me and I- too. Yes. And I love finding different kinds of, has anyone sticked? Has any one of the organization charts say, no, they haven't sticked, but I are stuck, but I, I've, um, I've tried making acting sometimes, which is such a, just like, just out there kind of, especially when you're just working, you know, they're all your ideas are everywhere and there really is no linear for me. There's really no linear way of working, but I was like, okay, so how can I make this make sense to me? Let me find an organization chart to put all my ideas of acting in there of like what a human, like if you think about acting, it's literally just creating a human almost like, or making someone feel like they are a life. Mm. It's like a a life into the world. Um, And so you, you can't put that into an organization chart, but for sure I tried. Um, so yeah, it's like a combo of both. And then even now, now that I've been doing a lot of the acting and so finding the balance of, for the longest time I was doing both at the same time, um, finance and accounting and acting. Mm. And now I've been mainly acting for a good couple of years now. And then now I'm like, well, kind of, I kind of miss finance now. Really? So yeah, all those, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I think you can be both. both. It's kind of like what we were talking about where I was doing finance and working in it. And then I just couldn't imagine doing an eight to five, nine to five job for the rest of my life. I was like, there's gotta be more to this. Mm-hmm. I can't just be sitting behind a desk mm-hmm. this whole time. And then that's how I found acting. So it's just a balance of always do. And then you grow as a person. So then you find different ways of doing things. Or even if you want to, I don't think there's anything wrong with maybe I was more of an organized person. Now let me try to just be more carefree. And how does that work? How does that, how does that work into my life? And how do I feel doing that? And then I feel like through that, you go through the extremes and then you just kind of mold it into what fits for you. That's so true. I even think about too, like Ecclesiastes talks about there's a season for everything. Like there's a season to try different things. And there's a season. I mean, I even think about too, there's such a, we live in such a, what's my calling culture. And we're obsessed with finding our calling. And I'm always like, your calling is to be in relationship with God. And like the expression of that calling is so different depending on the season you're in. Like, I mean, I, I think it would be a horrible thing to think that your calling is to be a corporate finance employee, but then you become a mom and you have to take a year off to be with your kids. But like you're calling, no, you're calling in that season is to be a mom. Like it's always changing. And I think it's, it's so, it's, it's pivotal. And, um, and I think what's so cool about that too, like I think about you and then the finance and the acting, I'm sure with acting, you were talking about this, but it's like, it is creating a person. I never really thought about it that way, but like you're in acting, you're creating a person and like the emotions. And I mean, I am not an actress. I was Sharpay. Did you watch High School Musical ever? No, but I know Vanessa Hutchins. I know Zac Efron are in there. It's a musical. A musical? Yes, I mean, okay. To do Put it Sorry. in the organizational chart. It's on your to do list oh item. Oh my um, gosh. Anyway, I mean, all there are multiple, right? There's, there's several. So when I was okay. in elementary school, Sharpay is like the mean, popular girl that wears all bedazzled things. That's the one acting stint that I had. And it was so great. I was like, <laughs> I'm never doing this again. I'm ending on a high note. Um, anyways, I'm, I'm joking, but I'm not an actress, but I imagine like there's got to be some some threshold of risk to almost like absorbing that character as yourself. Um, I, I think I've like listened to some interviews before about people there. It's like they become their character and they can lose themselves in the process of like becoming that character. And you posted another Instagram quote. I love your Instagram quotes, girl. I did some deep stuff. Um, but you said like, and God said, love your enemy. So I obeyed him and loved myself. And I thought about that. And it's what I initially reached out to you about, like that relationship between self-love and learning to love yourself and how I'm sure in a position like yours, where you're acting, it's even that much more important because you have to know who you are 
to go and embody another person without the risk of you becoming that person. And so, and I could be wrong there. I'm just curious though, like if that is um, like how you develop that armor of self-love and like in your relationship with, with faith and your relationship with growing and unbecoming. And so you can really step into who you are and thus be able to stand, step into fully your roles with the chosen and NCIS Hawaii. Feel like, oh my gosh, my mind is racing with all the things right now. And I'm really trying to, this is where an organization chart would be so great. Let's my mind. Let's get a whiteboard out, whiteboard this session. <laughs> Man, because I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I remember all the points that I would love to discuss and it would be so fun to discuss them with you. Um, I love that you brought that up. So let's see. Acting. <laughs> acting. So it's, I think what I really love about acting is that to bring in that quote of loving, because we're, our, we're, I think everyone is their own worst critic. Yeah. We can judge. We, we're with ourselves 100% of the time. And we know what we're doing, if it's right or wrong. We know what we're thinking, what we really want to do, all these things, what our thoughts are. Um, and we can be our own worst critic and we can be so judgmental of ourselves. I know I am horribly. And I know that can, yeah, it can bring me down so much, especially if you think so much and you're so analytical. Oh my gosh. It's just like, it's never ending. There's just always so many thoughts that what I love about acting is because we play so many, or I get the opportunity to play so many different types of characters with so many different lifestyles and thoughts and ways of living. And, you know, depending on how much work you do with something with like a backstory, their upbringing is very different. Um, you, it gives me the opportunity to learn how other people that I probably might judge, or maybe people who decide to do something that kind of reflects something that I have decided in my life that I was maybe judging myself really harshly about mm. and then seeing how this character is going through it, what decisions they make, what they're thinking about it, how they reflect on it, how they move past it or um, combat it or even say, yeah, that was the wrong decision, but we can move forward. We, forward. we don't have to stay in this. Uh, I think that Initially, that was a way for me to understand my mind in a safe way because there was a layer instead of me having to do it for myself and reflect on myself and my decisions, I could do it through a character. Mm. But now, because I've, I feel like I've lived my life, I mean, I'm not perfect at this, but I try to see it in a way of, I actually really do like learning about myself. I like, um, and binding everything and figuring more about my, is it pretty? No, it sucks. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's horrible. Um, but then because of my experiences doing that, I know, I know that I've come out the other end more happy and more knowledgeable on myself. And just, it makes me crave wanting to learn more. Mm -hmm. So that's how I see acting now. Mm -hmm. Like it started as one thing where it was kind of a, you know, maybe a wall that I was putting up of like, oh, I can pretend to be this and I'm learning, but through a safe space. And then now it's more so vulnerability has always been something that I've, that consistently I have to continue to work on. It's even with acting, like it's, you know, you have to feel like you're in a safe environment, mm -hmm. a trusted space, your fellow actors that you're working with not even actors but like all the people that are around you on set you there's a level of trust there um is that and only something that can come externally or do you do things internally to create that safe space i definitely i know i personally work on creating safe spaces for me i think that's why whenever we were discussing the whole having like what it is for me that I need before I start working and just having a little bit of time 
seven minutes, maybe, or maybe I'll try seven uh, minutes now. Just seven minutes seven of quiet minutes time. Safety. <laughs> That's a <laughs> hashtag. <laughs> So, was, so to, that just kind of like puts, because hopefully you're doing all this work beforehand and it's, it's for me, what I do in those, in that little quiet time is bringing everything back to the character that I'm working on, what I'm about to go do, what the scene is about. And that in itself mm-hmm. is kind of the safe space is the, is just wanting to be true to the character and what um, just making sure that you're upholding the integrity of, of the work. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, that's like, to me, that equals safe space. It's kind of like, because it's, it's like, because I'm, because we're creating these people, I feel a sense of responsibility to tell their story in the best way possible. And if I'm, if I'm not, then I would, I, I know Yasmin would feel horrible about herself. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's the safe space is the safe knowing that if I, if I put my best foot forward for this human, this other human, then, um, then I'll feel better about it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like would you say sense? that you apply that same principle and energy and intention to putting the best foot forward for creating that safe space just for yourself to be vulnerable as Yasmin, not as Yasmin for a character? I definitely try to. I definitely, yeah, I've, I've been trying that more and more as the years go on and it's become easier, thankfully. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> to answer your question. Yes. I love that. Yeah. You look like you had another thought. Yeah. I was trying to think, I was like, I'm trying to think of, cause it wasn't always easy. And what I'm thinking about is it also depends on the people. You have to find your people mm-hmm. who you can be that there are levels I think of, mm-hmm. of what I share and how I share and you just kind of gauge depending on who you're around um, what you share mm-hmm. and how you can share. Mm-hmm. That's so good. I think even to like creating a space, like doing that hard work, because like you said, it's not natural. And I even think about like in scripture when Paul talks about like I do the things I know I shouldn't do and I don't and I don't do the things I know I should do. I think part of me when I read or think something like that, it's like creating a safe space within myself. Um, not just with other people to open up, but like be open with yourself for so long, especially in my college years, I was so resistant towards feeling pain because I associated my worth with like being able to make others happy and please people. And so I would literally run away from negative feelings, sadness, discomfort. Cause I was like, if I can't, if I feel that, then I'm not gonna be able to make whoever happy. Um, but what that did was it caused me to not be a safe space. Like I didn't let myself sink into myself to feel my vulnerabilities. And there's power in that, like creating a safe space, not just in the environment you in for a character or a job or your friends, but like just by yourself. I always ask myself the question, like if I was alone and like, I just had God to talk to, and it was just God and Annie, like, would I be, would I feel safe? Or do I, do I rely on all these external things? People act like clapping for me, applauding for me, telling me I did, I did a good job. Am I relying on that to feel safe in myself? Um, and it's interesting because it's like, I feel like we do a yeah. world that positions external measurements of success as a gradient for feeling safe with how you're doing in life. And mm-hmm. you're stripped of all that are you still good? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's so funny because I don't know if you saw my Instagram where, which you did. I know you did. I did some (laughs) stuff. My, my last post was in 2019 and I'm getting back into it. I go through phases. I, I posted my first story, I think in October of 2023. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm going to tag you on a story after this. You can repost it. <laughs> so second story, March 1st, 2024. <laughs> it could be a timeline yes. for, oh my goodness. 
Um, but I, I hadn't posted on my uh, wall grid. Wait, oh, Facebook is wall. Your profile. My profile. Feet, yes. Sorry, your feet. My, it's your feet. My feet. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. That's yes. Wow. And all of them have different terminology, like oh, I know. Twitter X, X Twitter. I don't know that. I, that's like, I don't know. I don't have an X. I don't have that. I, I'm just like Instagram. We're being intentional here. That's it. <laughs> yes, and that's enough. That's where everyone is. Yeah. So I I stopped because I there. If you, you again, if you look at actually, you can't put a timeline together because if you look at the dates, it's literally me trying to maybe like market myself, enhance my career, and show people. Um, whatever image that I was trying to create and then kind of falling off because then I get so tired, you know, all the, the constant that people talk about of, of, um, social media and how it affects you mm -hmm. and everything. And it, it would negatively affect me. And I was always comparing myself yeah. and all of this, and it was taking so much time away, da, 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 so many things. And so I was like, okay, so let me just put that aside. But then I'd come back to it. And then I'd use it for a little bit and then all the negative things started happening to me. So I just, this is me personally, I just get easily affected by it and very quickly. And so then I also operate in extremes sometimes where I'm just like, okay, you know what? I'm just, I, no, I can't. Cause I just don't even want to think about it. I don't even know how to balance it. So just no. Mm -hmm. And that was 2019 obviously things have happened since then and I haven't posted any of that. And a, a part of me is kind of happy that I didn't feel the need to going back to everything that you just said. I, I didn't feel the need to have to, um, cause I did think about it. I was like, maybe I should like let people know, like, I think this is so cool and it is so awesome. But I, when I would sit with myself and like be really vulnerable with myself. And then I thought about how it was for me. And ultimately what I decided again for me is that I actually really enjoyed that I was getting these wins that I just thought were so cool. And I didn't feel the need to have to share it with people. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was awesome. I don't know. There was something to that where I was like, I would rather live in the law. I was thinking long run in the long term of thing, the, the, the span of things of my life, I was like, I think I would rather be that way. That's how I would like to live my life. Instead of feeling like I have, I don't ever want to feel like I'm, I need the approval of people or the acceptance of people or an applause mm -hmm. every single time. I, and it's great. It really is. See, this is the balance. Like I, I admire people who can just live their lives on social and still be normal. <laughs> It's just so hard. It really is. I, it's, it affects me to the point where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm sad. Mm -hmm. My life is not like this or doesn't look like this. Or even if things are, I think, awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe it's not that awesome. Maybe I'm mm, not great. No. What affects me? No. I think that there's so much wisdom in what you just shared because even I was listening to a podcast the other day. Um, do you know who Sadie Robertson is? She is. Oh my gosh, I'm so familiar. She um she does a podcast that's awesome, but she was talking about how we all have and and James talks about this in scripture, but like we all have kind of like unique sins of our like we have unique things that are sensitive to us in regards to like sin and what like triggers us. And I I think that's true. It's like you know God made us all uniquely, so we all have different trigger points. And um I think just like uh you know, for example, there's going to be people who are listening in that they will never struggle with alcoholism. Like they just won't like drinking too much alcohol for them. Like they know when to stop, but there's other people that are like, they can't have a drink because it's so sensitive for them. There's people on this podcast that maybe like for them, it's pornography, right? And other people, it's like, I've never struggled with that. Some people it's, it's money. It's like being super, super OCD about their finances and not being able to spend anything. And other people are like, eh, but I just have never struggled with that. And I think it's just like about knowing what that is for you, one. And then two, also knowing the intention of your heart. It's like, you know, man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the, God looks at the heart. And I think about, especially social media and the interesting relationship too. I took a break about six months ago 
because same thing, I was getting really sad. I was comparing myself to every, like basically seeing everything I wasn't and like everywhere, everything I had not accomplished. And um, I think the algorithms are literally skewed that way to show you like everything you haven't done. But anyways, um, I, when I was posting, I was like, okay, I got to this point where I was like, what's my intention here? It's not to serve people or to give value. It's to make myself feel like I'm enough. And those are two very different things because it's a great tool. It, like a hammer can build a house from mm -hmm. a toe. Social media is the same. It's done amazing things, but it's like when you use it, what's your intention behind it? So I think there's wisdom in what you just said, especially for this the, uh, the audience demographic we're speaking to, like mostly 18 to 25 year old young girls. I mean, social media is, I mean, is nuance or not nuance, but it's as part of their lives as shoes are to people. Like they just grew up with it. They just, it's just like the idea of having it is they don't know what that's like. And so I think what you said about being reflecting on your intention is so good. And it's so interesting too with the chosen. I mean, it's just blown up and that is something you're a part of and to not feel called to like, shout that all about which most people would want to you know what i mean and i'm curious because it's where was the chosen filmed in texas was it filmed in dallas yeah okay. in it's just a little south of dallas oh my gosh so i was curious about this too um like yeah. with the chosen i mean i'm sure you have changed so much in the filming of the chosen as yourself like what you've learned about yourself and um but I think it's cool how it was filmed in basically your hometown. So you had this reflection between Yasmin before The Chosen and like everything she's known up to that point, being in a place she's familiar with, and then also having this experience that's probably changed her so much, but you're still in the environment the old Yasmin was in. So like, how has that been? And how, like, what are some of the things you've learned about yourself and grown into with yourself that are so contrasted because you have this unique opportunity to be in the place you grew up or live? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't know. It just, it really, I try to be as present as I possibly can. And I don't think, if anything, it's just really exciting. It's exciting to see that, oh, my hometown is right there. I work we, we film maybe 20 minutes south of where I grew yeah. up. So I went to high school there. I went to grade school, elementary, middle school. Okay. Um, my, my, my childhood home is there. Um, and so for me, it, it's more so exciting. It's very interesting to see how just a city itself changes mm -hmm. just as, as time goes on. Um, but when I sit, and reflect back on it. I definitely did not think that old Yasmin, who was sitting on the bleachers watching Duncanville Panthers play, would be probably filming 20 minutes south years later. And that's just such a cool, it's fun. The fact that even just acting in general was not even planning on doing that. And I had to leave Dallas to go to LA to pursue my dream, which I didn't even know if it was a dream. I was like, let me just see what happens. I feel like this is the next step. Let's just do that to only go back home. Like my dream sent me home, which was really, that like means a lot to me. That Okay. For some reason, what came to mind is like, so when I sit and think about that, that's like the, that hit. Yes. I think oftentimes we think our dreams are this really far away thing or this far away place or like God's going to take us on this crazy journey. And it does like, but a lot of times the journey is internal. It's like the, the furthest journey oh. you will go is internally. Have you ever read The Alchemist? I love The Alchemist. Let's go. That is what I'm thinking of. Because I'm making a movie. It's a movie? There's me. I don't know if it's out yet, but they're making one. You should be in I'm it. pretty sure. I should, I, try. I should be in it. I should come back from my Sharpe stint and come and be in it. Yes. This uh, is your time, bro. Absolutely not. <laughs> but I, um, I like that whole, for those who don't know the book, you should go get the book, but, um, or watch the movie coming out soon. But basically like the idea is this, you know, the guy goes on this massive, crazy journey to come right back to where he was. That's literally how I'm thinking of your story right now. It's like, you've gone on this crazy journey to come back to where you always were, but as this like way 
deeper and more developed and more unbecoming to wrap up to what you're initially talking about person. Like how cool is that? That like, that's the journey yeah. that you got to go on. I even think about too, like G looking at the life of Jesus and what you guys are portraying with the chosen, like his entire ministry, I think it, it's like was in a span of 30 miles or something like that. Like it, it, he didn't, physically go very far, but he impacted the entire world for generations to come. I just think so often we, we over ex or we over generalize and over exaggerate what we think like needs to happen before God wants to use us or before we can step into that thing that's nudging on our heart. And it's like, the joke is no, you have it all right here. Like follow that seed. And oftentimes you're going to be right where God initially put you, but just as a more unbecoming person, looking more like him, like stripping yourself of all that you never were and owning all that you always were. And um, it's cool to see your story play out like that. And it's just what you guys are doing is so cool. And I know we're coming up on time. I could talk to you for like 60,000. Um, but okay, I want to hear about the chosen and NCIS Hawaii updates. What's going on? Where can people find um, you? What are you excited? So, what what did what you say? What am I excited about? Yes. I'm, I'm excited about um, football season, <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. I have to throw a shout out. I always have to throw a shout out about my Dallas Cowboys. Here we go. And okay, speaking of The Chosen, um, season four is out right now in theaters. Episode seven and eight, when at the time of this filming, um, seven and eight is out. And let's see, it should be out on the app mid March after we're done with seven and eight being out in theaters. And then NCIS Hawaii started, uh, we started airing on CBS. And that is on Mondays and we are on the next episode is going to be this upcoming Monday. What date is that? March 1st, 2nd, March 4th, 4th? March 4th. Yes. Episode four Mar of season March three. Four. Season three on three dash four. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Oh. That's so cool. <laughs> that. I just wanted to get I love that. I love that too. That means it's going to be good vibes. Yeah. That means everybody's who's tuning into this needs to be watching that because <laughs> it's just nice how it that literally <laughs> that, that would be great on an organizational yeah, part. So much. I love how much you love numbers. Love. This is just so no, I, you know, I have these weird things in numbers. But it's funny because I suck at math. Like when it comes to actually like calculating numbers, I am awful, but I just have weird I don't know, quirks with numbers. Yeah. You notice them. So whenever you just look into the world, like if you do your laundry, are you like, is there, are, is it numbers? Are you like looking at numbers somehow? Yeah. I, um, I, did you ever have a TI-84? Like a TI-84? I Apple love those. Girl. Do they use them still? Because if they did, that's how you shared notes in school sometimes. I'm telling you. Right you, now, I love it. The things you could do. Mm -hmm. People do not know. No. If they do not have a no. GI-84 calculator, they are missing no. I still have, they were expensive too. I kept mine. It's like, I'm keeping my GI-84. Oh, no. oh man, smart. Take instruments based out of Dallas. Yeah. They're oh, in Dallas. Based think... out of Dallas? So anytime I'm driving by, I'm like, there's my childhood. Think about me. That's literally how I got to school. <laughs> <laughs> you were actually like a computer for, I mean, it was crazy, but it was so bulky. I mean, I still remember like having to shove that so in my backpack. <laughs> oh, oh, it made my backpack like 20 pounds heavier, but I was like, this is <laughs> um, man. Oh my gosh, Yasmin, you are such a delight. Thank you so no. much for being on the podcast. Where can people find you if they also want to stalk you? And Oh, I love stalking. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I shouldn't promote stalking. That's not a good thing. Um, um, reasonable legal stalking. Where can they do yes. that? Yes. <laughs> Come on, guys. Uh, I am, I think, on all things Yaz, Y-A-S, my last name, Albastami. Are you on X? I think that's it. Are you on Twitter? Yeah. yeah okay. I am on 
Twitter, Twitter X. Yes. All right, cool. Well, <laughs> Yasmin, you are amazing. I am, I watched The Chosen already, uh, season four, episodes seven and eight. But for those who haven't, seriously, go watch it. Go watch NCIS Hawaii on Monday and I will be tuning in. And um, you're just such a delight. Not only that, but like you are just so, this is probably one of my most fun podcast conversations I've ever had. Like you just yeah. shine light. <laughs> So many, so many areas. And it's so inspiring for young women to look up to you. And like, I just hope if anything, they adopt from this conversation, the way you're able to take this kindness in your heart, but shine it to all people and in all spaces. And like, remember with that, that's what we're called to do. We're called to be lights of the world. And the world is big and the world needs light right now. Really bad. Um, A lot. So thank yeah. you for all you do. Truly. Thank you. Thanks so much for this podcast too and having me on. Of course. Anytime. I'm so excited. Anytime, girl. Yeah. And I hope that this blessed you and encouraged you, reminded you that God gave you a unique light and it is your job to shine it in this world because we need you to. That being said, if you were blessed by this message and you can think of anybody else that also needs this type of encouragement, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, Leave me a comment. Uh, it helps me out a lot and helps this message that I do believe God gave my heart to share with the world gets out. I hope you have such an amazing rest of your day.